going on folks it's your main man richie rich and today we got a brand new penny stock a new one came down the pike and i cannot wait to talk about it uh but before we get started this episode is um let me put on my thinking cap ah there it is this episode as always is brought to you by wordy.com and the really hood podcast also some great news my newest podcast is now available becoming richie rich you can search that anywhere the podcasts are available and you can listen to it now. It's already on, it's already out there. Uh, we'll be using Blue Space quite a bit and that's uh, a really awesome resource that, uh, I created. I'm so, so happy to say that because it took so much effort. I'm still far from done. This site will get better and better over time. But as of right now, uh, we're going to look at a new stock, Cold Chain New Continent. CCNC is the ticker. And I'm going to start off by giving this stock an A. As I always do. Oh, wait, don't press enter. All right, I didn't. Great. We're going to start off with an A, and then from here, we'll, uh, you know, look through and see what we can find. All right, the very first place I would like to visit is investing.com, and we're going to type in the ticker CCNC, Cold Chain, New Continent uh, Limited. And we're going to, you know, do a deep dive, some deep stock analysis on this particular company to see if, you know, if it's worth spending some money here. Okay, so let's check it out. Let's see, the first thing I like to do is just understand the field, the industry, the uh, the background of the company. So I'm going to go ahead and check out their profile. All right. Let's see here. What do we have? All right. So Cold Chain, New Continent Limited, formerly TMSR. So TMSR is their former name, and if I'm not mistaken. I do remember that company quite a bit. And when I see name changes, that usually gives me pause because I'm like, why did they change names? Uh, what did they do? What happened under the old name? I'm just gonna do a quick, very quick search here, TMSR, just to see if anything pops up. Okay, they have one stock split under that name and let's see, TMSR. See, maybe Finviz wouldn't recognize it because this company no longer goes by that name, so nothing there. But we do know that they had one stock split recorded. Uh, let's see if Doco can recognize TMSR. Okay, okay, so yes, they do recognize it. Cold Chain New Continent. Um, I'm really looking for any information that I should be afraid of. All right, um. Nothing is jumping out. Okay, maybe the name change was just a new coat of paint. Nothing to be afraid of or to worry about. It's a blank check holding company. So this is a blank check holding company. Hmm, it's interesting. The company mainly operates three segments through its uh, uh, subsidiaries. The solid waste recycling system segment is engaged. So it's three different segments of this particular company it appears the solid waste recycling system segment is engaged in the research and development manufacturing and sales of solid waste recycling systems so that's a that's something positive they're you know you know finding a way to you know repower resource recycle i like that particular thing that makes me feel good and bubbly inside to invest in the company that's doing things like that why not the coal and coke wholesale segment there's another segment of this three-tiered company is engaged in the coal wholesale and sale of coke what kind of coat? Uh, steel, construction materials, machinery, and equipment, and steel scrap. Okay, all right. The coating material segment is engaged in the research, development, production, and sales of zinc-rich coating materials. Through its subsidiaries, the company is also engaged in digital technology-related businesses. So I like that. I like the fact that this company is multi-tiered. That means that if one thing goes under, they have other things that can keep the company afloat. Uh, they're not putting all their eggs in one basket. I like the fact that this company is well diversified. So that's pretty solid. They have 56 employees. They're in the trading companies and distributors industry and the industrial sector. <clears throat> These are all 
for the most part, pretty positive. I don't see any, any uh, cause for pause right now. I'm going to go ahead and give this company, as of this moment, an, uh, an A+, plus because I like some of the things I'm seeing there. All right, next, I'd like to go and check out the market cap and just see how much money they have at their disposal. They have a lot of companies, a lot of things that they're offering, a lot of things they're doing. I would imagine that they have <clears throat> a pretty substantial market cap to be able to do all these different things, I would imagine, okay? And plus, they have 56 employees. That's not a small number. Okay, so the market cap is about 10 million. I'm starting to see that as a pretty ran, like a, a relative standard when it comes to a lot of penny stocks. In, in terms of volume, this is the horsepower of this company because the volume is the amount of people who invest in this particular company. And without the people, this company is not going to do much. So this is, in my opinion, pretty low. 700,000 uh, people, or well, on average, they have 1.8 uh, million people who for the most part, invest in this company, which is not bad. 1.8 million people. That can certainly get things running. So I do like that. Um, I guess this may be the value for today, right? And the PE ratio is below 1%. 1 for me, that's pretty solid. I'm not I'm not mad at that. And uh, yeah, so the market cap is nine. The revenue is two. Okay. All right, good. So the next thing from here, right now, I'm still about where I, where I was prior. N nothing that Jump side is a negative for me. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the historical data just to see what this stock has been doing over the last 30 days. I want to know that personally. Okay, so over the last 30 days, the high, whoa, that's a big high, was 46 cents. That's pretty high when you compare it to where it is right now, 17 cents. That's pretty high. That's pretty high. The low is 14. Okay, so that means that uh, for the most part, Right now, with it being 17.8, <clears throat> it could drop. It can drop to about 14, which is not a substantial drop in my personal opinion. Uh, before I go further, this is a disclaimer. I'm having fun right now. Do not follow any of my advice. Okay, I am not your financial advisor. All right. If I, if I were, you would be paying me a fee. Okay. Now, the average uh, for this company is 18.4, and that is below where it is trading right now, which makes me happy because if I got in this, uh, bit my tongue. Ouch. Shucks. If I got in at 17.8. That would mean that I would more than likely gain some money because the average over the last 30 days is um, 18.4. Now, I want to go a little further here. And by, 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 by the way, I just have to do this. I have to see when this high was reached. If I could please know that information. When was the high attained? I want to know if I could, please. Uh, let's see. So the high was 46 cents. And I want to know when it happened. Tell me. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. Wow. October 6th. This is maybe the second or third company that had a huge day on October 6th and 4. Something happened on the on that day. You know, I've been hearing a lot of chatter in, the, in you know, the, the uh, stock market hemisphere about um, things being on the return, the market crash scare is over i've been hearing that a lot and maybe it ended on october 6th in terms of the market crashing and everybody run for the hills all that talk may have ended on october 6th because i've seen several companies have a huge day on that day um okay so they had a huge spike and that spike was not long ago which also makes me pretty comfortable i like i like what i'm seeing so far i'm not mad at anything i'm saying right now because they're trading at 17 cents they just had a huge spike and i guarantee you that they had a lot of days in which that spike had to wear down so you can see here multiple days when that spike just dropped okay so what happened was it went up and then everybody piled in and the people who got in late they paid once these people who probably had been in for a while start to sell now i do see a, a additional spike not to the same magnitude, but certainly it showed that it can recover. And that's also good news for me because, okay, it has a spike and then it drops for three days and then it spikes again. Okay. And right now it's dropped for four days. Who's to say that tomorrow there won't be an additional spike? And I like the fact I see the pattern. It spikes, it drops, it comes up, it drops, up, drops, up, drop. So it's showing me a wave pattern, right? And if you look at that pattern, you know, and use those elementary skills you learned back in the day. We're due for a green day pretty soon. So I would argue that right now, and the day is October 18th, Tuesday, not sure when I'm going to upload this, but as of this moment, it appears that a, a, a green day is on the horizon. I mean, just look at the pattern, okay? Just look at the pattern. You can see it. 
If you know how to, if you're seeing it the way I'm seeing it. All right, so I want to go a little further. Let's look and see how this stock has been doing for the entire year. I want to pull out all the skeletons from this company. I want, I don't want anything hidden from me. And let's go far, far back. Let's go really far back to the first. And let's see what we find. All right, now we're going way, 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 way back. All right, here we go. So the high is a dollar fifteen. That's a that's a really good uh, high. And I'm actually pretty curious. When did that happen? If I, if you could tell me, please. When did that happen, please? We we'll see a dollar fifteen. Okay, that happened on January eighteenth. Okay, that's a long time ago. So it's no promises that that will happen again. And over that time, the low was fourteen cents. Can I know, or can you let me know, Mr. Computer? When was that low? When did that happen? That happened on the third. That's interesting. So they had their lowest moment just days before they had their like one of their highest over the last 30 days, at least. OK, in the last 30 days, they had a really steep drop, drop down to 14 cents. And I guarantee you some investors saw that low price and said, hey, this is our time to get in. And as you can see, the next day they went up 10 percent. The next day, 1 percent. The next day, 50 uh, percent. So. That low price gave everybody, the people that know what they're looking for, the indicators they're looking for, that gave them the green light. Hey, let's get in here and let's make some money real quick. So as I'm looking, I'm looking at these four days of drops back to back to back to back. And I'm saying maybe it's time to get in, but that's not enough information for me. So I'm going to go ahead and look a little further. I am very curious to see what the average is over the year. And it's 63 cents right now. It's trading at 17. There's no promises in the stock market. You can't go into the game saying, well, if I buy in at 17, eight, I'm guaranteed to make 64 or make money off of 64 cents. This stock can actually go down further than 14 cents and get delisted. It can do a reverse split. We don't know what the stock is going to do. So to beat the market, you got to you got to do some research and hope that God's will is on your on your side. You know what I mean? But I'm going to say that that's a good average over the year for sure. So especially when you consider where it is right now. I think the bad, the worst news for me is that it's still hovering around its low. But its low is 14 cents. And right now it's at 17, eight, which means it's not far from the low. I need to know some more information about the stock. Looking at the historical data, I would say it still maintains an A plus in my, in my opinion because it's a lot of promise, a lot of upswing. So I'm going to con continue to um, value or at least assess this uh, stock at an A plus as of this moment. All right. I like to look a little further, though. That's not enough information for me. So now we're going to go ahead and look at some financials. Somebody screaming like, hey, look at this. Look at that. I know it. But this is the way I do it. And, you know, this is the way I do it. So it's not the perfect system, I'm sure. But it's how I do it. All right. If we look at the return on investment, it is a red dress with a beautiful I mean, it's a negative 2.37%. That is not a bad return on investment. I've seen that particular number be much higher, 54%, 60%. So the fact that they're not really hurting their investors uh, too badly, that's not a bad thing. This, this is something I can definitely get behind. 2.37% is not bad, uh, but it's not a positive number. So on that account, I'll at least be fair and drop down to an A, but I'm not, I'm not running for the hills right now. OK, now let's keep looking. Um, let's see where I want to go next. I want to go to ratios, see if I can find the purchase to earnings ratio number. See if we can find some P P E information. All right. So we're just waiting for this computer to kick in here. It's a slow site. All right. Um, P E ratio. The company's P E ratio is 0.59. Usually a good P E ratio is 25 or lower. No industry information. I'm wondering why, of course. So I'm not sure why that is. All right. Dividends. One of these days, I'm going to find a penny stock that offers dividends. It's never happened in, in all my years of investing. But I'm going to go ahead and cross my fingers just in case today is that day. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on, little engine. You can do it. Man, investing.com is moving incredibly slow today. All right. No data to display. No surprises there. I want to see if we have any earnings information. I want to see if uh, there's any information or data on earnings. Um, let's see. Well, their ads are working real good. <laughs> All right. So no, no uh, revenue or forecast information. I hate when that happens. That sucks. Uh, we do have some past information, but no forecast information. Okay, next we're going to the technical 
indicators. This is basically algorithms that, you know, can help us a little bit in terms of figure, figuring out what this stock is doing or what it could do. All right, so we're going to look at some technical analysis. Oh, my gosh. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, okay. So hourly, it's a strong sale. So the uh, algorithms is saying that this stock is not a good, uh, a good stock to trade on an hourly basis. What about five hours? Still no. What about for day trading? No. What about for weekly trading? No. What about for monthly trading? All right. So the technical analysis or algorithms do not see this as a strong stock at all. But that is not the singular indicator of whether or not we should be getting in. Those are computers. They don't account for a lot of things that, you know, they don't they don't account for human psychology, whether people will be, you know, more eager to jump in because of whatever or the news, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't account for, for things of that nature. So uh, that is not the singular indicator for, my, for myself. I don't just go off of technical analysis. But I will say this. I do take it and I do, uh, you know, I do list. I do watch it. I do include it in my overall assessment. And as of right now, I'm going to drop this down to about a B. I've seen, I'm, I'm going to do B+. Plus. I've seen quite a few things that show me that, uh, you know, keep your eye open for some more information. You know, stay, stay hungry. Don't just jump to any conclusions yet. Now, I would like to see if this stock has had any stock splits over its history. We know there was a name change. We're going to actually count this stock split against this company because just because you change your name, it doesn't mean that you didn't, you know, you didn't do a stock split. So we're going to count that and add it to whatever it has right now. And CCNC, let's see if we have any new stock splits under its new name. All right, good. So basically one stock split over its history, and that is certainly not a bad thing. They did have one, and I would like to see what type of stock split it was. It happened in 2018. That was a long time ago. And sometimes that means that they might be more eager to do a new one or another one since it hasn't been uh, so recent since they've done one. They did a two-for-one split. That's not a bad split, by the way. That's not a, a bad split. All right. So, yeah, if you had 1,000 shares when they did that reverse split, you had 2,000 shares. Wait, what? Is that how that goes? Wait a minute. For example, 1,000 share position pre-split became 2,000 shares. Wait, that's, that's a, I'm not mad at that at all. A two, yeah, two for one. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a different kind of split. I don't know if I've seen that split before. Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, I am trying to understand something. Uh, what's the stock I just looked at? VS. No, VS didn't have any. I think then uh, GHS, GHSI had one, right? I want to see something. Oh, wow. Okay, so they did a two for one. They gave you more shares. How does that work? I've usually seen a one for six. Okay, reverse split. All right, so you, if you had one, one share, they chopped it into six. But according to what I'm seeing, CCNC, they went and, okay, let's go back to TMSR. They did something a little different. They did a two for one. So they gave you two for one. Hmm, that's not a negative. It's not a negative. It's like a good thing. Okay, I got one. He gave me. You gave me a, a second one. I, I need to understand why they. I need to know. So that's something I need to learn about and do some more research. I've only really, uh, I guess, considered reverse stock splits. And I always thought that were stock splits and reverse stock splits were the exact same thing. So as you can see, I'm still learning the game, and I'm, I'm showing you these moments because nobody knows everything. Okay, uh, somebody's ready to crucify me right now for not knowing that, but I guarantee you, someone more knowledgeable than them can point out something that they didn't know. And this is why I, I tell you at the beginning, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just going through the process. And perhaps you can see what I'm doing and improve upon it. But that is still good. For me, that's not, that's not a bad thing. A two for one, I, I don't know if, know if I've ever had one of those in my entire investing career. So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, so I'm not going to count that against them. Now let's go ahead and look at some, some recent news and see if we can find out anything about what the stock is doing and why we see the stock price trading at where it's at. So let's see. Um, here we go. All right. So, okay. We got some very drastic switches and changes here. So they did a, wait a minute, announces withdrawal of proposed public offering. So apparently they were prepared to do a public offering and then they withdrew from it for whatever reason. But this news is all the way back in December, 2021. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I like to see a company that's in the news headlines. I think that you know, encourages investors. And this might be why 
the volume, and you know, it's pretty low in my opinion at um 700,000 today. Uh, we know the average is 1.8 value, the average volume is 1.8 uh, 1 million, but yeah, no news. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. I do want to double check that though. No news. Uh, I'm going to pull up another resource that I don't really use on this, uh, on this, on this show, if you can call it that. And I want to see if I can find news anywhere because that is very interesting. Okay. It doesn't seem to be fluke though. As I look here, the last bit of news on my second resource back in December. So that's not a fluke. That is, that's pretty accurate. Whoa. Okay. All right. Let's see what the news was. Let's see what it was exactly. So they did announce a public offering, which made, made investors run for the hills. I would like to know what the public offering was. Like, what was the number? I am very curious about that. Maybe we can find out why they ran. So where is the public offering? Uh, a proposed underwritten public offering of common stock and warrants. Can you show me what the public offering was? I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for a price. I don't see it though. Uh, I'm not seeing the price. Let's try a different approach. Okay. All right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't see the public offering price. Maybe they didn't they didn't uh, show it. Maybe they didn't show it, or they didn't expose it, or tell it to the uh, the investors as of yet because it was it was announced. You know, it was a, an, an announcement more or less. It was a proposal like, hey, we may do this. So maybe that was not a reason to give the investors a actual number, I guess. I'm definitely just trying to figure it out myself. Um, but they had some pretty good spikes here on, on uh, two consecutive or uh, two, two consecutive spikes upon giving out news. They announced pre-commitment for Bitcoin mining. That's pretty solid. I'm pretty sure that makes some investors happy. And it did uh, new continent. Announced its major order agreement with AGMC for mining operation. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, so the news here is not very telling, but the fact that they've had no no current news, I'm going to go and drop that down to a B minus. That makes me a little concerned, a little bit. Uh, having news is certainly not an indicator of success in a great stock. No, um, in fact, uh, a, a company can manipulate its news and you know drive up their price. In a very superficial way off of you know fake news if you can call it that but certainly it's still a good thing for me i like when companies are in the headlines a little bit because that shows me they have a little bit uh, some things going on when there's no news and we don't really know what's going on with the company we need to know what's going on within the company's corridors i can't walk into the building i'm pretty sure i could but the point is i shouldn't have to because there's some news about what we're, what we're doing some current events and i think that if i'm not mistaken this company is okay it is uh let's see i'm trying to figure out the location of the company maybe that has something to do with the fact it has no news it's not a company that is based in the u.s or something i need some kind of information does it show the location of this particular company and if i don't see it here i'll look somewhere else but i'm trying to understand that because for me that doesn't make the most sense okay it is uh it's in the u.s market but that doesn't mean that the company is located in the u.s so i'll do some research on that uh, in a moment. But um, next, let's go ahead and look at the short percentage float to see if any investors are betting against this company, because that will definitely give us some insight on whether or not this is a good company or not. Right now, uh, a lot of hidden information, in my opinion. I, I like to treat all my companies that I invest in like I'm going on a date. This is a, that, that one chick or that one guy that doesn't have a social media. So you got to do a little bit of extra digging and 